As we speak today, I want to begin by saluting the anti-imperialist front and all of the other struggles, movements, and organizers that are participating in today's call, that are participating in this action, and that continue to struggle against injustice, to fight against racism, colonialism, imperialism, and exploitation everywhere in the world, and who are coming together to build our collective movement. Um, on behalf of Sami Dune, Palestinian Prisoner Solidarity Network, we are very honored to join you today and to uh, take our place in this international struggle to confront our common enemies and fight for a liberated future. Um, as you know, this event is taking place during a global week of solidarity for revolutionary prisoners, revolutionary prisoners like George Ibrahim Abdullah and Ahmed Sadat, revolutionary prisoners like those in the Philippines, revolutionary prisoners like those who continue to struggle in Ireland, revolutionary prisoners like those in the jails of the Turkish regime, revolutionary prisoners like those in jail in Egypt, in Morocco, revolutionary prisoners like those everywhere around the world who continue to fight for freedom. Um, and, and George Abdella and Ahmed Sadat, while representing the Palestinian cause, also represent that global view of liberation that this event represents as well. And of course, as this week is taking place, this is not taking place alone. It is taking place amid a powerful and deeply rooted uprising that is taking place in the United States. And this uprising that we see on the streets of cities when we hear the call of Black Lives Matter, when we see the demand that Black liberation matters. This is a movement that's developing from deep and strong roots. And on behalf of Sami Dune Palestinian Prisoner Solidarity Network, we expressed our strongest and deepest solidarity with the Black liberation movement, not only in response to the brutal videotaped police murder of George Floyd in front of the world. But we know that this murder is only the latest in a long string of black lives and black people whose labor has been exploited, whose lives have been stolen by a state and a system that is built on settler colonial genocide against indigenous people and another form of genocide, including um, for, and forced transatlantic slave trade and ongoing exploitation and oppression um, against Black people, Black lives, and Black communities. And so as we are organizing today, this is happening amid an uprising on the streets that reflects an ongoing fight back against the same brutal forces of imperialism that threaten people around the world, the same brutal forces of imperialism that are backing Israeli occupation forces in Palestine or the same brutal forces that are sending military armed police into the streets of black communities, into the streets of working class neighborhoods across the United States and attempting to uh, continue a reign of terror that has taken place for centuries. Um, we know that the United States and Israel, they don't only share a common framework of settler colonialism and racism, they actively share with one another technologies and security techniques that are used to repress black communities in the United States and are, and are used to um, repress Palestinians inside occupied Palestine. And so when we see the images of, of the murder of George Floyd, when we see the image of the, the knee on the neck, um, what we're seeing is the indelible image of the exploiter and the oppressor attempting to stamp out the lives of the people. We see the, the, the global contradiction of imperialism versus the people, and we see what racialized capitalism in the United States looks like um, for, for, for black people and for all people who are, who are really fighting against the system and who are fighting to survive and fighting to live in a system that has dedicated its resources to destroying their lives rather than um, rather than proclaiming them. And so in this context, um, we recall the words of Ahmed Sadat, the imprisoned general secretary of the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, who wrote in response to the words of black revolutionary Huey Newton, 
from inside the occupier's Ramon prison on behalf of myself, my comrades, and the Palestinian prisoners' movement, we extend our clenched fists of solidarity and salute and arms of embrace to our black comrades who struggle for the liberation in the belly of the beast continues today against fierce repression. So when we witness the escalation of our against our movement, as we see today in the Philippines, as we see in the murderous and orchestrated attacks on our Palestinian resistance, we see the criminalization of black people and movements. We are still seeking to defend our peoples from the relentless assaults of capitalism, Zionism, and imperialism, and their police and military forces. The struggle, the cause, and the movement of the Black Panther Party and the Black Liberation Movement are not a closed file. It is an open file, an ongoing struggle, and a continuing movement for justice and liberation. These, the ideas and of the experiences of the elders of the movement, especially those who have come through prison, stand alongside those ideas passed down through writing, books, and literature to carry on from one generation to another the trajectory and path of struggle toward a future in which youth are today coming forward to lead Black and Palestinian revolutionary struggles for liberation. So within this context, of the escalating imperialist and Zionist attacks, of the police riots against people taking to the streets in the United States, we're also seeing the threat of an annexation um, inside occupied Palestine. Now, of course, all of historic Palestine is occupied. There has been ongoing colonization for over 100 years in Palestine and 72 years of Zionist colonialism and incremental genocide and ongoing and uninterrupted Nakba. And this isn't a crime that's perpetrated by Israeli occupation forces alone. It's one that is entirely funded, supported, and mobilized by the forces of imperialism in the world, including the European states and particularly the United States of America. So we see Benjamin Netanyahu declaring openly his intention to um, illegally and unlawfully in violation of all principles of international human rights law and humanitarian law um, annex the Jordan Valley, which is one of the most fertile parts of the West Bank. It's part of the agricultural breadbasket of the Palestinian people. And so this is not only an attack on Palestinians' right to their land, it's also an attack on Palestinians' ability to sustain themselves and grow their resources and feed their communities. That's you know, one reason why this annexation is not just land theft, it's also an act of ongoing genocide. This uh, annexation plan is designed to exclude Palestinians from any kind of self-determination and sovereignty in over 90% of historic Palestine, meaning that it fundamentally is designed to exclude Palestinians from self-determination and sovereignty altogether. Now, this might seem like a radical step, but in fact, it, is part of been the, it has been the logic of Zionism from the beginning, which has been to occupy more of the land and exclude more and all of the Palestinian people. Zionism is a racist movement. It has been built in alliance and in friendship and in collaboration with colonial with with historic european colonialism and with today's us imperialism it's fundamentally a racist ideology and is the guiding ideology of the israeli state um, it's not a movement that's based on seeking justice for Jewish people against anti-Semitism and racism. In reality, the Zionist movement is about the brutal colonization of Palestine, the division of the Arab world, and service to Western imperialism and colonialism in the region. So in this context where Benjamin Netanyahu is declaring that the Israeli state is going to annex um, you know, allegedly 30% of the West Bank, but in essence, 90% of Palestinian land on the 1st of July, what is the importance of a week of action for political prisoners today, for revolutionary prisoners? Because what we're also seeing is that when we is that the resistance and the people are under attack. And if we want to support the Palestinian resistance that continues to fight back, because when we say that there have been 100 years of colonization in Palestine, we also know that there have been 100 years of resistance. Just like in the Black Liberation Movement did not start and end yesterday and today, there are still prisoners of this movement that continue to provide leadership and, and struggle and 
produce um, thought and 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 consciousness within prisons like Jalil Muntakim, Mumia Abu Jamal, Mutulu Shakur, Russell Maroon Shotes, who continue to fight for freedom. In Palestine, there are over 5,000 Palestinian political prisoners. They represent the resistance of the Palestinian people. From, and that includes all forms of resistance. Yes, that includes armed struggle to defend the land and the people of Palestine and to liberate it from occupation and oppression and apartheid and colonialism. But it also includes organizing students, organizing workers, organizing women, building community movements. All of these things are criminalized by the Israeli occupation because they present a fundamental threat to its ongoing uh, to its ongoing crimes against humanity, to its ongoing war crimes, and to its ongoing genocidal project. Um, the Palestinian prisoners represent the true leadership of the Palestinian National Liberation Movement. You know, not the Oslo process, not the so-called Palestinian Authority that continues to engage in security coordination with Israel. These are the leadership of the Palestinian people. And so when we struggle for the liberation of Palestinian political prisoners, what we are also struggling for is the cause for which they have sacrificed so much, which is the liberation of Palestine from the river to the sea. And so we know that when we're fighting for Palestine, we're standing for Palestine, why is this cause so important internationally? Because the struggle in Palestine is not just you know, as Hassan Kanafani said, it's not a struggle for Palestinians alone. It is the cause of the oppressed, the cause of every revolutionary in our era. And that is because Palestinians face imperialism, Zionism, and Arab reactionary regimes, not just the Israeli state. And so at the same time, that means that there is a Palestinian, Arab, and international struggle for freedom in Palestine but to defeat imperialism because a victory for Palestine is a victory for all people struggling for justice and a victory everywhere where people are fighting for justice and fighting for liberation is also a victory for Palestine. Um, and just as we spoke about Ahmed Sadat, the imprisoned leader of the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, whose powerful words on the black liberation movement show just how effective and brilliant of a leader that he is and why Israel wants him in jail. George Ibrahim Abdullah also represents this multifaceted aspect of Palestinian resistance. Um, George Abdullah is a Lebanese Arab communist, a struggler for Palestine, who has been imprisoned in French jails for 35 years. And one reason why he continues to be imprisoned is because he refuses to give up his commitment to revolution. In fact, his commitment strengthens each year. And every single time that he speaks, he continues to express a revolutionary vision for the liberation of Palestine, a revolutionary vision of liberation for the entire region, and a revolutionary commitment of struggle to all prisoners who are fighting back against these same reactionary forces that continue to keep him in prison, to keep Sadat in prison, to keep 5,000 Palestinian political prisoners in prison inside Israeli jails, as well as Palestinian strugglers um, in the jails of the United States and other countries as well, and as well as Palestinian strugglers imprisoned in Arab regime, in reactionary Arab regime jails as well, like in, in Saudi Arabia and Egypt and elsewhere. Um, and we also know that just as the struggle for the liberation of Palestine is international, it's also an international struggle for the liberation of revolutionary prisoners. And so, of course, today we salute the lawyers in Turkey and all of the political prisoners who continue to fight back in the most um, horrendous of conditions, to keep up hunger strikes for hundreds of days, um, to continue to express their will to write articles, to compose music, and to express their vision for a liberated society. And we know that they continue to fight back and resist, and our collective struggle um, is more important than ever as we build ties across borders and across movements to demand the liberation of every single political prisoner in Turkey, in the Philippines, in the United States, in Palestine, and everywhere where prisoners are held by the forces of um, imperialism, racism, capitalism, colonialism, Zionism, and reactionary regimes. And so I want to conclude also um, once again by saluting all of those who are participating, thanking the anti-imperialist front for organizing this movement and saying that yes, imperialism means that the people cannot breathe from Palestine to the United States to everywhere where people are struggling. People cannot breathe, but they are resisting and they are fighting 
to breathe. They are fighting like George Floyd fought until his last breath. They are fighting to breathe and to live and survive. And this includes the fight against the so-called annexation plan in Palestine, the fight against the continuing Nakba. On the 1st of July, people are organizing around the world, Palestinian communities, Palestinians inside occupied Palestine, supporters of Palestine and people of conscience everywhere who want to take a stand against imperialism and Zionism and reaction are organizing protests in a day of rage in Ramallah, New York, Madrid, Toronto, Paris, Vancouver, Toulouse, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Gothenburg, and many other cities. And we encourage everyone watching this to join in that day of action, to mobilize together, to join with Sami Dune. You can visit our website at samidune.net, to join with Auda, you can visit the website at auda.org, and to build this struggle for liberation, for collective solidarity, and for a future without imperialism, without Zionism, without reactionary regimes, and for justice and liberation for all. Thank you.